Okay, hello. Hello. Um, Onka, how are you? Well, thank you. Good, good. We've got another four minutes or so. I'm just going to start everything on my side. <clears throat> Will you stand by for me, please? All right, let me just quickly share my screen. Okay, good day everyone. Welcome to this lockdown digital school. This is and I am the presenter of Onkarabetse. And my Twitter handle is at Onkarabetse underscore S. Um, guys, can you just please make sure that your mics are switched off? Right, can everybody just ensure that their mics are switched off? Thank you very much. All right. Okay, so guys, today we will be continuing um, with the human digestive system from where we had left off last week, Thursday. Okay. And if my memory serves me well, we are continuing with the homework. We'll be marking the homework that I gave you guys. Okay, so can we please use the Zoom group chats to write down our answers? All right, so this is the question that we were dealing with. And if you guys are new to this platform, um, Thursday, we were looking at the small intestine and absorption that takes place in the small intestine. So question 2.3 reads, the diagram, just, sorry. The diagram below illustrates the microscopic structure of a bullet. Study the diagram and answer the following questions. Question 2.3.1, identify part labeled three and its function. Question 2.3.2, which label part contains blood with relatively higher amounts of glucose and amino acids? Question 2.3.3, name the process that enables humans to absorb the nutrients mentioned in question 2.3.2. And question 2.3.4 says, explain how the village is structurally adapted to enhance the absorption of digested nutrients from the small intestine. Can you guys hear me now? Is it is the sound okay? Teacher, sorry, your volume is poor. Can you see if there's something wrong on your side? Right. Is it audible now? Can you hear me now? It's audible but very faint. Can you maybe set it a bit louder? Okay. Yes. okay. Is it good now? Okay, can everyone hear me now? Yes, ma'am, we can hear you. Thank you very much. Okay, guys, please send through your answers for question 2.3.1. Question 2.3.2 as well. I'm waiting for answers, guys. Okay, so Marvin gave an answer for question 2.3.1, saying that it is the lacteal that is correct. And what is the function of the lacteal? What is the function of the lacteal? So guys, remember, question 2.3.1 is asking about the label 3. And the label 3 is indicating this structure here. You can see it, it's indicating this structure there. What is the function of the lacteal? All right, because I got the answer, which is lacteal, I'll give you the second answer. 
it is for the absorption of fatty acids and glycerol. All right, guys, that the lacteal's function is to absorb fatty acids and the glycerol. And that is correct, Mbali. Mbali just said that the lacteal is the, okay, the lacteal is connected to lymphatic vessels and it absorbs digested fats. So that is correct. It absorbs the digested fats. Okay, let us move on to question 2.3.2. Which label part contains blood with relatively higher amount of glucose and amino acids? Which labeled part contains blood with relatively higher amounts of glucose and amino acids. So remember that the blood coming in from here, as you guys can see, the arrows are indicating um, the flow of blood. So remember that the blood coming in comes from the aorta, right? And these are our epithelial cells and we have absorption taking place, right? So this is the blood going in and that is the blood going out. So which part contains blood with relatively higher amounts of glucose and amino acids? Send in answers, guys. Which blood contains relatively higher amounts of glucose and amino acid? Will it be the blood coming in or the blood going out? Okay, I got an answer saying it is two. All right. So guys, remember, yeah? the blood going in does not have any nutrients because absorption only happens here, right? What, where the epithelial um, cells, cells are, right? So we have blood coming in, right? And then we have, let me just get a pen to illustrate this. We have blood coming in using this passage here. All right. And then here, this is where we have our absorption taking place, absorption taking place. And remember that the blood is, the blood is moving. It's moving in that direction. And we also have absorption taking place. Okay. So at this point here, the blood will have certain um, nutrients. At this point here, it will have more nutrients than this point here. If we can just call this point A and this point B. Right. So point B will have more nutrients than point A because there is more absorption taking place. At point C, we also have absorption taking place. At point D, we also have absorption taking place. Right. And now we can see that point D, because absorption is taking place at all these points, will have more nutrients in the blood. Therefore, the blood going out has more nutrients than the blood coming in. So the answer so this question here is the label A, because that is that indicates your last part where the blood is flowing out, right? I hope everyone understands. If you don't understand, just um, tell me so that I can explain it again. Right, question was humans to absorb the nutrients mentioned in question 2.3.2. Name the process that enables humans to absorb nutrients mentioned in question 2.3.2. How do the nutrients move through the epithelial cells to your blood capillaries or your lacteal? How do the nutrients move from a small intestine, right, through the, the columnar epithelial cells to your um, blood capillaries and your lacteal. How do they move? So that's basically the question in question Send through your answers, guys. Okay. 
All right, if you said diffusion or active transport, that is correct. Remember we said that the nutrients move from your small intestine through the epithelial, um, the columnar epithelial cells, which is this part here, which is this layer here. They move through, through, through the um, epithelium cells via diffusion or active transport. Okay, guys, just note that diffusion and active or active transport. Remember that diffusion is the movement of substances from a high concentration to a lower concentration. And active transport, that is the movement of substances against its concentration gradient. All right, and it requires energy. Remember, guys, we dealt with this last week, Thursday. Okay, now let's go to question 2.3.4. Explain how the villus is structurally adapted to enhance absorption of digested nutrients from the small intestine. Explain how the villus is structurally adapted to enhance the absorption of digested nutrients of the small intestine. So because this is a fairly um, long answer, I'll just give it to you guys. Um, and here's the answer. The first <clears throat> part of the answer, as we can see, guys, the marker location is three times two. So we need three points, right? And it's two marks each. So my first point is that it is only one cell thick, right? The epithelium is only one cell thick so that nutrients can pass through easily, all right? So the epithelium cells are only one cell thick so that nutrients can pass through easily. Okay, the next point is that it has a moist membrane that enhances diffusion. It has a moist membrane which enhances diffusion. The third point is that it is supplied with mitochondria to supply energy for active transport. It is supplied with mitochondria to supply energy for active transport. All right, another option that you guys could have wrote for question 2.3.4 is that it has microvilli, all right, which increases the surface area and allows for greater absorption. It has microvilli, which increases the surface area and allows for greater absorption. Okay, so guys, I am going to move on to today's lesson. And guys, remember, if I am going too quickly or you want me to stay on a slide for um, a bit of time, just please use the group chat to indicate that for me, okay? Right, so now let us look at today's lesson. So the lesson outcomes for today is that <clears throat> you should be able to explain the role of the liver in the deamination of excess amino acids and the breakdown of alcohol, drugs, and hormones. You should be able to list the functions of the liver you should be able to briefly explain the function of the hepatic portal system. And lastly, you should be able to write down the function of the large intestine. Okay, let's just quickly do a recap from where we left off on our previous lesson. So we looked at the liver and we said that the liver secretes bile, right? It receives all end products of digestion via the hepatic portal vein. And I said that we will look at the hepatic portal vein in detail today. And that excess glucose is stored in the liver, right? Excess amino acids are deaminated in the liver. Alcohol and drugs are detoxified in the liver, okay? So, here, guys, we have a structure of the liver. The liver is made up of cells called liver cells or hepatocytes. Okay, guys, the liver cells secrete a liquid called bile, right? We dealt with bile, guys. The liver cells have tiny ducts called hepatic duct, and the bile is stored in the gallbladder. Remember, we said that the liver manufactures the, the, the bile, and then it is stored in the gallbladder, right? The cystic duct arises from the gallbladder. Here is the cystic, um, here is the cystic duct, guys, this green part here. So you can see it, that green part there, that is the cystic duct, which arises from the gallbladder. And it, the, the hepatic duct, it joins the cystic duct to form the 
common bile duct that we dealt with. Okay. So there is the cystic belt that is, that is joining your hepatic duct. And this is where your bile, which is secreted in the liver, is transported to go be stored in the gall bladder. All right, are we all following? Guys, please use the um, group chat just to indicate to me if I can move on or if I need to further explain anything, all right? All right, so I'm just gonna move on, okay. Awesome. So the common uh, bile duct, it goes on to join the pancreatic duct, right? And we said that it forms what we call the hepatopancreatic duct, right? Which opens up into the first part of the small intestine, which is called your duodenum. Okay. Now, guys, very important to note is the functions of the liver. So the liver has three general functions, and that is storage, deamination, and detoxification. And as a storage organ, it converts excess glucose into glycogen and stores it, right? And it converts excess glucose into fat and also stores it. And it also stores minerals such as iron and important vitamins such as vitamin A, D, and B12. So guys, very important to note is the functions of the liver, right? So in its role in deamination, it breaks down excess amino acids, and this results in the formation of urea. Okay, so the amino acids which are broken down form urea, and then the urea goes into your bloodstream to your kidneys where they are excreted, where it is excreted rather. Okay, then the liver can detoxify some harmful substances and make them harmless, that is your alcohol, and your drugs and any hormones present in the blood is broken down in the liver right this is after it um, the hormones have performed their functions then the liver secretes bile and the bile is stored in the gall bladder okay now let us look at bile in more depth so bile is a yellow green liquid okay it is alkaline and has no enzymes so alkaline just means that it is basic Okay, so remember that the, um, the chyme that comes from your stomach, it is acidic. And we said that in the duodenum, we have um, the neutralization of chyme. So this neutralization of chyme happens because of the basic bile, all right? The basic bile or the alkaline bile. And what's also important to note about bile is that it has no enzymes. It is secreted by liver cells and it is stored in the gallbladder. We have already spoken about that. Okay, so now when the bile is transported by the common bile duct, ne? the common bile duct collects the bile from the liver cells and the gallbladder. The common bile duct joins the pancreatic duct, which forms the hepatopancreatic duct. And the hepatopancreatic duct then carries the bile to the small intestine. Um, to the duodenum, right, the first part of the small intestine, and it has the following functions. The bile has the following um, functions. The water in the bile keeps the food fluid, enabling easy movement along the alimentary canal. Remember we said that once the bile um, is secreted into the duodenum, it makes your food thin and watery, okay? So the bile salts, they neutralize the acidic food, it's very important to note, coming in from the stomach. They also break up fats. Remember, we spoke about how um, bile salts act as a detergent, right? They break up fats into tiny droplets, and we say they emulsify fats, and this increases surface area for enzyme action. So, and our fourth function is that bile salts help in the absorption of fat and fat-soluble vitamins, for example, vitamin D, E, A, and K. And the last function is that bile prevents the decomposition of food in the elementary canal because it is an antiseptic, right? So are we all following? Awesome, cool. All right, let us look at the structure of the villus again. Guys, remember, you should be able to draw the structure of the villus. 
right? And you should also be able to label it accurately. The important labels are, number one, your epithelium columnar cells. So I'll just write the abbreviated um, words there, epithelium columnar cells, ECC. And then you should be able to list your blood capillaries. Just write BC for blood capillaries. And your like till, just write an L there. And then your blood from the aorta and the blood that goes to the portal vein, to the hepatic portal vein. All right. So let's just quickly go through this again. We said that um, nutrients, they are absorbed from your small intestine through the epithelium column cells, right? Your amino acids, your minerals, your vitamins. They go through this cell here and enter your capillaries, all right? And then we have fats and glycerol, which also enter through the um, epithelium columnar cells and enter to your lacteal, like, right? So this is, we have um, a movement of blood which goes in from this way and comes out that way, through there. Right, so this is where your blood exits. That is your blood flow. So guys, remember again, as we have covered in the previous question is that the blood coming in has less nutrients than the blood going out. Okay, so the blood going out has more nutrients than the blood coming in because absorption is taking place at different parts, right? Different parts um, of your villus. Okay, awesome. So yeah, we have your nutrients going out, which go to the hepatic portal vein. And we will be looking at the hepatic portal vein right now. And then some fats are absorbed into your lacteals and it goes, it joins your lymphatic fluid and goes through your lymphatic vessels and then to the heart. Okay, guys, so remember, you should be able to draw um, a simple structure of the villus and be able to label it as well. Right, now let us look at the hepatic portal system. So the hepatic portal vein sends blood directly from the small intestine to the liver, okay? Remember this, it is this vein here, this vein here, which has a lot of nutrients because absorption has taken place, okay? It enables the liver to conduct certain functions. It stores excess glucose, in the form of glucagon. It deaminates excess amino acids from urea and glucose. So remember here we have our first function, the storage of excess glucose, and we also have the deamination of amino acids to the form of urea and glucose. It breaks down alcohol, drugs, and hormones before the blood goes to the rest of the body. So that is the function of the hepatic portal system, right? So that vein, it goes to the liver where we'll have storage of excess glucose, where we'll have deamination of amino acids, and we'll have breakdown of um, harmless, harmless substances like your alcohol and drugs to form, um, to make them less harmful. And then we'll also have the breakdown of hormones before your blood goes to the rest of your body. So that is basically before assimilation takes place, right? So here is just a basic structure of the hepatic portal system. So here, here we have your absorption taking place that it's in the small intestine, right? It goes to your hepatic portal vein. This hepatic portal vein, remember guys, it's from your villus, right? So from your different villi, we have this hepatic portal vein, which sends your uh, blood, which, which has a lot of nutrients to the liver. And then in the liver, we have storage that's happening. We have deamination of amino acids taking place and we have breaking down of harmful substances that is taking place, okay? And then after all that has happened, then the liver sends the blood to the inferior vena cava. And from there, we have the blood um, distributed to all different cells of the body. So basically, that is where assimilation takes place, where your um, body cells take up nutrients from the blood. Okay. All right, now let's move on. The large intestine. Okay. 
So the ileum, which is the um, last part of the small intestine, it leads into the large intestine. And the large intestine is also made up of three parts, which is your casea, your colon, and your rectum, right? And the first part is called your casea, and it is located here, right here. It is a sac-like portion in which, in which the ileum opens up into, right? The appendix is also attached, and there's the appendix, and you said that it doesn't have a particular function in the human body. The colon is the second part of the large intestine, right? And it is made up of three parts, which is your ascending colon, your transverse colon, and your descending colon. These three parts, right? Um, these are the three parts, but you guys don't need to know, um, you don't need to be able to differentiate between your ascending transverse and your descending. Just know that we have a colon that exists in the large intestine. Okay. So what happens in the colon? No enzymes are secreted in the colon. Water and salts are absorbed. Um, absorption of a vitamins produced by bacteria living in the colon, which um, for example is vitamin K. And then no digestion takes place. So this is very important to note that no digestion takes place in the colon. And we also have the formation of feces. Remember all the foods that has led, that has led into your colon, those are the foods which are not digested, right? And they form feces. Okay, then the rectum, this is where we have the storage of the undigested food or the fecal matter. And it is released, the, the, the feces are released via the anus. Okay. Right. So this basically the end of human of the human digestive system. And we will just re, um, recap and revise what we have covered. And so guys, I need you guys to follow with me. If you have any questions, please ask because we are going to move on from the human digestive system okay so remember what we covered when we started with the human digestive system is that we need to be able to differentiate from organs of the elementary canal and the accessory organs and we said that in this picture here we can see the organs of the elementary canal by the pink okay so all organs which are in pink those form part of your elementary canal and we said it starts by the mouth right? Theosophagus, the stomach, small intestine, large intestine, and finally your anus. Cool. So in the mouth, we said that we have ingestion taking place, and we also have mechanical digestion taking place by the aid of teeth. And we also have chemical digestion taking place, right? And it is aided by the, um, the amylase, which is secreted by the salivary gland. Okay, Marvin, do you have a question? You can just write in the group chat. Teacher, please check your sound. Okay. All right, is it okay, ma'am? Yes, it's much better, thank you. Okay, Marvin, you had a question, your hand was up. Just waiting for your question. All right, so let me just continue from here. All right, I said that in the mouth, we have mechanical digestion taking place and egestion taking place, right? And we said that chemical digestion is assisted by the amylase, which is secreted by your salivary glands, which form part of your accessory organs. And then esophagus, we have a food bolus in the esophagus and it moves down via peristaltic movements, okay? Remember, you guys should know the definition of a peristalsis. And then we said that the esophageal sphincter or the cardiac sphincter, it needs to open up in order for the food bolus to enter the stomach. 
right? So once that happens, the food bolus enters the stomach and there is churning of food that happens in the stomach. We also have the release of um, digestive juices like your um, hydrochloric acid. We have enzymes which are secreted in your um, stomach. Okay. And we also said that mechanical digestion also occurs in the stomach. This is via peristaltic contractions of the stomach. Okay. And in order for this um, acidic chyme to move out to your small intestine, this pyloric sphincter here also needs to open up. And once it opens up, your food chyme enters the first part of the small intestine, which is the duodenum. And we also spoke about the hepatic the hepatic uh, pancreatic duct, which brings through pancreatic juices from the pancreas and bile from the gallbladder and liver, right? And they all meet at the duodenum, right here. And absorption and digestion takes place throughout the small intestine. And then today we just covered that from the small intestine, we have this undigested food entering the large intestine and it starts by the cacium and moves through to your colon right and we said that there is no further digestion taking place in the colon but we only have the absorption of water and salts right and then the rectum we have at the rectum which is here sorry the rectum we have um, the storage of our feces and then when you have a defecation um, sensation we use the anus to release the feces or the undigested food guys i hope we all understand the digest the human digestive system right so another thing that we can look at here is basically what i have covered on the previous um, slide. This just mainly shows our elementary canal without the accessory organs, okay? And yeah, this is basically what we have covered. And then guys, another important thing, it is the digestive enzymes that we have that are released in um, the different organs, okay? So we have carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are produced by salivary glands. Remember the MLAs, which is released while um, you're chewing your food, while you're chewing a food that has carbohydrates, all right? It is also produced by your pancreas and your small intestine. So the substrate for carbohydrates is carbohydrates or starch, okay? And that is the pH at which it functions. And the products of carbohydrates are your monosaccharides, right? Important to note, glucose, fructose, galactose. So basically your small sugars, right? So that is, the di that is how um, carbohydrates are digested. So now when we look at the digestion of proteins, it utilizes proteases, okay? And an example of protease is trypsin or pepsin. Okay, so remember the pepsin is um, released by your stomach lining and your trypsin is released by your pancreas. So, and then there's also um, another release of proteases that happens in the small intestine and the substrate, it is your proteins and polypeptides and the pH at which it functions in the stomach is three and eight in the small intestine and the products of your proteins and polypeptides are amino acids. Then the digestion of lipids that utilizes lipases. Um, your lipases are produced by your pancreas and the small intestine, and the substrate is lipids, okay? And it works at an optimum of eight, of a pH of eight. And the products of lipids is your glycerol and your fatty acids. Right, guys, so this is just a summary of digestive enzymes that we have covered. And it also covers the digestion of proteins, the digestion of carbohydrates and lipids. Right, are we all following? Are we all following, guys? Please respond.
Right, so let's do questions. Question one, guys, I need you guys to use the group chat to write in your answers, right? So a large organ that is involved in deamination storage and detoxification is called A, the stomach, B, the liver, C, pancreas, or D, the gallbladder. Please send through your answers, guys. Okay, thank you, Oradilo, for the answer. And everyone else, thank you, Kegeto, for the answer. Okay, and the correct answer is B. So the liver, it is the organ that is involved in deamination, storage, and detoxification. Remember, guys, that in the stomach, we only have the churning of food that is taking place. We have mechanical digestion and chemical digestion taking place. The pancreas, um, that is your organ which can have an exocrine function or endocrine function, and that releases pancreatic juices into your small intestine. The gallbladder stores bile, all right? So our answer is B, the liver. All right, question two. Bile is secreted by A, the stomach, B, the liver, C, pancreas, or D, the gallbladder. Bile is secreted by A, stomach, B, liver, C, pancreas, or D, gallbladder. Thank you, Oradilo, for the answer. Thank you, Mbonge. Thank you, Mbali. All right. Hey, guys. So as I've um, said that we have our acidic time, right? So the stomach is the only thing that the stomach would secrete in. Okay, no. The stomach has digestive juices which are secreted there, right? Which is your HCL, you have um, your other digestive juices, your mucus, and your pepsi, right? And then B, you said that it is for storage, right? And it is for deamination and detoxification. But another function of the liver is that it secretes bile, which is then stored in the gall bladder. Okay, so the answer to this question Okay, so the answer to this question is B. All right, there we go. Remember, guys, the gallbladder only stores bile, okay? It doesn't secrete bile. It only stores the bile. Question three. Hormones that are involved in maintaining the blood sugar balance are secreted by A, the stomach, B, the liver, C, the pancreas, or D, the gallbladder. Can I get the answer, guys? Answer to question three. Okay, just to refresh um, your memory, um, the hormones right, that are involved in maintaining blood sugar balance, those are insulin and glucagon insulin and glucagon so where do we get the insulin and glucagon and this is from the organ that has an exocrine function and endocrine function the organ that has an exocrine function and endocrine function okay marvin has given an answer what about you guys what about the others 
then we will all be fine. Right, so the answer to this is C. Okay. So the hormones that are increased by the pancreas. Liver. Okay, so maybe that is where the confusion was. The, the hormones are secreted by your pancreas, but act on the liver because the liver stores your excess glucose. All right. So I hope you understand. And question four. The fluid that emulsifies fat is called A, insulin, B, glucagon, C, bile, D, none of the above. The fluid that emulsifies fat. Remember we said that insulin and glucagon are hormones released by the pancreas. So our answer is C oratile, that is correct. All right. All right, question five. The conical shaped tooth that assists the incisors in tearing off food is the A, molars, B, premolars, C, incisors, or D, canines. The conical shaped tooth that assists the incisors in tearing off food is the A, molars, B, premolars, C, incisors, or D, canines. Marvin, that is great. It is D, canines. All right. So guys, remember, I hope you guys studied. Remember to go through um, the different functions and shapes of, the, of your different types of teeth. Um, all your incisors, canines, premolars, and molars, right? Should know their function and shapes. Okay, question six. Large teeth that have two pointed cusps are called A, molars, B, premolars, C, incisors, or D, canines. And the answer is B, Geketsu. It is your premolars. All right. Question seven. The number of teeth in an adult human is A, 32, B, 24, C, 21, or D, 36. And just the, a reminder, the um, human dental formula is 2, 1, 2, 3 over 2, 1, 2, 3. Okay, awesome. Yes, the answer is A, it is 32. And then the caseum, colon, and rectum are part of A, the small intestine, B, large intestine, C, stomach, or D, the esophagus. B, that is beautiful, guys. Okay, and the last question, which layer of the wall of the small intestine is the connective tissue with blood, lymph, and nerves forms a part of A, serosa, B, muscular layer, C, submucosa, or D, the mucosa? So where do we find the connective tissue? which is your blood vessels, your lymph, and your nerves. So where do we find it? Do we find it in the serosa, the muscular layer, 
the submucosa or the mucosa. Remember the four layers of your elementary canal. I can just give you guys a reminder. We had this um, structure here. And we said this was. All right, so I've got an answer which says C. So the correct answer is C, the submucosa. So guys, just remember that your outer layer is your serosa, all right? That is your serosa. And then it is followed by your muscular layer. And that is where you find your longitudinal and circular and smooth muscle cells, right? And then we have the submucosa, yeah, which is your SM, and that is where you find your connective tissue, your blood, your blood vessels, your lymph, and your nerves. And then the innermost layer is called your mucosa. All right, guys. Thank you very much for joining in today's lesson. And that concludes the human digestive system. So guys, tomorrow we will be looking at nutrition. We're going to start with nutrition. So guys, please follow Africa Teen Geeks on their various um, social media platforms. And if you haven't registered with them, please just visit their website and re register with them for the um, daily newsletter. Thank you very much for joining in. Good day and goodbye.